Hi guys, welcome to this week's Extra Time Show, your second bite of the eSpurs pie each and every week. This week on Extra Time, we'll be getting your thoughts on our big talking point of the week, which this week was, are any of our own good enough to make the first team next season? By which, of course, we mean, are any of the current crop of Spurs homegrown players are good enough to break into the first team in the forthcoming season. So, as always, we put that to you guys on our social media, on Twitter and on Facebook, and you guys have been great again in getting your responses into us uh, and having to think about which of those lads, the the long, young lads that we all know of, the, the Walker Peters, the Carter Vickers, um, and Nomar, um, many that we'll discuss in the next 15 or so minutes, are they good enough to, to break into the first team, bearing in mind the quality that we've seen in the first team this season? And as I say, as always, you've been great guys in getting your responses into us. First up, though, let's get the thoughts of the eSpurs team. I'm joined tonight by Jason, uh, Ricky and Ian. So let's go first up to Jace. How many of those, Jace, that, that we know of um, can you see breaking through and, and making the grade next season? Well, I think certainly Ryan Mason will stay within the squad next year. I think Potch is a big fan of his and the, the passion and the, the mentality and, and the, the being a Spurs player that he brings to the squad. But um, I think Bentaleb certainly has a big year ahead of himself next year because he's one that's definitely gone backwards. And if we're looking to strengthen with Wanyama, Schneiderlin, Witzel, whoever else comes in, will Bentaleb be happy to, to sit around and, and be behind them and Eric Dyer? Uh, Onomar and Winks, I think probably the development for those will be better based Next year, we're, if you're Champions League and we're trying to compete for the title, I think, you know, probably the best route for them is to go and get a good loan, ideally a Premier League loan, and the same perhaps with Cars of Vickers. Certainly agree. And, and I mean, in terms of the strength and depth there, there's there's some really bright names coming through, aren't there? You, you know, the likes of Cameron Carter Vickers, we haven't even seen yet in the first team. You mentioned there, though, Jace, Ryan Mason, and you quite rightly point out that Pochino, of course, is, is a, seems to be a fan of, of Ryan Mason. Ultimately, though, now he's, he's what, sort of early 20s, sort of, you know, you think that his, his development has entered the stage now where he really start needs to start um, producing, you know, without sort of knowing what's in Pochettino's mind. Do you think yourself that Ryan Mason will ever be of the quality that Spurs need, especially as a Champions League side? Well, I certainly wouldn't, don't see him having the quality where if we had Real Madrid in a quarterfinal or we had... Uh... I don't know, Inter Milan in a quarter final. I'm not so sure he's got the quality for that. But in terms of playing bottom half of the Premier League teams where we, we have to rotate the squad next year, I, I certainly think, for instance, you know, we're playing West Bromwich Albion at home or Southampton at home. I certainly think there's still a role for Ryan Mason to do. Yeah. But, um, you know, overall, if you pick our best best side, then certainly, you know, in, in the terms of the best 11, he wouldn't be in it. Yeah, it's. I mean, he scored some cracking goals, didn't he? The goals that he has scored, he certainly got the the technical side to his game. There are other other parts of his game that you look at when we've seen him in in the Europa League and the cup games, and you think, mm, maybe maybe not. Especially in the in the Europa League there, when we saw him um, in in the latter stages of the Europa League. Jace, what have you got from the uh, social media game this week? Right. First of all, I've got Ryan at Ryan Spurs underscore. Onomar could see the start in 11 a few times. Hard-working lad who's good on the ball and has good things to him. We've got Logan Clark at Logan Clark underscore 22. Maybe Carl Walker-Peters gets a couple of cup starts. We've got Ollie Wadhams at Ollie THFC. I think Sterling Edwards and Cameron Carter-Vickers will be in the team come the end of next season. So there's, you know, there's four, four or five names there that we haven't even really seen in the first team yet, have we, this this season, um, and Cameron Carter Vickers uh, certainly heard about at the type of player he is. Um, not having seen him play myself, but I certainly heard that he's a bit of a, you know, beast of a, a defender and certainly highly rated by the by the Americans. So there's one to look forward to. You would think coming in to the defensive uh, ranks there. So I mean, the other one that, that's spoken about is Josh Anoma. Uh, Ian, in terms of Anoma this season, he's one that's. Um, been brought into the side by Pochettino. We did say last week, didn't we, that at the moment he just doesn't quite look ready. Do you see that coming next season? Yeah, I think I do. I think that, um, again, he's another one of these players who seems to be trying too hard. I think he's desperate to to, to score his first goal for us um, in, in, in a Spurs shirt. 
Um, I, I'll notice he scored uh, for, for 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 one of the England was it the young the under nineteens he scored for them yep. during the international break. So he's got the goals in him. Um, I just think it, again he he's another one that just needs to to find his feet. Do you think um, Alonian alone would maybe do him do him good? I think yeah, I think alone to 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 another sort of championship side would 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 provide that little bit of extra sort of steel in him um and would 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 be in, improve his his first touch because I often find that that he you know he doesn't control the ball as well as as perhaps he would be but would do but I think that's down to the fact that he's trying too hard um and going back to the point that Jason made earlier on maybe we'll need these 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 players to 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 hang around you know, for for like the cup competitions and for like the the West Broms and uh, uh, you know the Norwiches um, of of this world. So, you know, may, maybe we keep him. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. What do you think, guys? It's such a difficult one to call. If I'm being completely honest with you, I, I I'm just not too sure. The problem is this season, Dyer and Ali have set the bar so high as has rose in terms of players coming through that in terms of the crop we've got at the moment, Bentaleb Mason. Bentaleb especially, I'm not too sure if he's going to be a Spurs player next year because it seemed to be last season that Poch really seemed to like him and he played whenever he was fit. And this season, um, he doesn't seem to have featured much at all. Even in the cup games, I think people were surprised that Mason was being played ahead of him. And I, I still say even Mason is... I think Mason is a squad player. I don't think he'll become a regular first-team player. Um, Onoma, on the other hand, is shown glimpses of a good striker. For me, I think like the boy, I, I think Onoma needs to go out on loan to a Premier League club, and that's where next season we're going to need to bring in another striker with Premier League experience or with someone that can have that European experience to come and better our squad. Um, it's still, I think, an exciting time for the youngsters coming through to Spurs because with Pochettino, you're always going to be given a chance. But the issue a lot of the players are having now is that the level, the bar has been set so high from the players that we've got in the existing squad. You're gonna find, it's going to be harder and harder for players to come through and break through. But um, it's testament to show the players that if they do put the hard work in on the training ground, they will be rewarded. And you're only going to get really an opportunity by, you know, possibly an injury to a player. And then it's up to you to prove your point to show why you deserve to not only be in the team, but be in the squad. And Potch has shown that if you deserve to play well, like there was a period with Ben Davis, he kept him in the side. So it's promising. You know, Potch will always give youngsters a chance. So um, I guess it'll be a case of waiting and seeing. But if you ask me who I think the most likely player I would think not to make it would be, I could see Bentaleb possibly leaving the club in the summer. And, and Rick, Bentaleb, I mean, this is a player, he must be wondering what the hell has happened, mustn't he? Because last season, you know, had a, had a very good season. I think if you put it in context and maybe compare it to some of the performances we've seen from the likes of Dyer and Ali this season, it maybe makes you think twice about some of the, the rave reviews that Bentaleb was, was getting last season. Um, because I don't think he was performing anywhere near the level that these guys are this season. Having said that, he had a, he had a good season. You know, let's, let's not um, get yeah, from it. Yeah, he did. But I, I think the, the point is, Andy, that last season when he played well, obviously he had the Chelsea game and the Arsenal game. He played exceptionally well in. At the end of the season, there was that clamour for him to sign a new deal. And then he turned around and said, well, the money's got to be right. And mm. it, it seemed like he was the one dictating the contract. And, I mean, I thought to myself, that's a bit bizarre. The kid's only been, has only broken into the team really this season. And he's trying to get on the higher foot to Daniel Levy, say what he feels he should be on. And you look at it now, other players that have signed new deals, Kane, Dembele, um, Rose, I mean, it's like these players, none of them have come out and said, I want X amount of money or whatever. It's mm. been done behind the done behind closed doors. You never heard of it. Whereas Ben Taleb, if it was him personally or his agent, one of the two, they seem to be quite forceful in terms of what they wanted and said, look, if you don't offer him what he wants, then the player's got interest elsewhere. And I just wonder whether that didn't help the situation. I mean, I know he signed the deal afterwards and obviously it all seemed to be hilled over. But he's had a stop-start season for whatever reason. The emergence of Ali and Dyer, the partnership they've had, it's been un unseparable, really. Um, but it would not surprise me if he was to leave in the summer. He showed, like I say, glimpses last season. But again, you put, like you've just said, put it in against Dyer and Ali, you can't compare. It's 
chalk and cheese in terms of the performance levels and Ali's game alone, the goals he brings to the game, the assists he brings to the game, the link up with Kane, it's two completely different players for me on completely different levels. You know, you're going to look at it now and say both Dyer and Ali, both of them, Kane as well, Rose, Walker, they're all going to go to a European Championship. They're all going to go and have, you know, play on the world stage. So they're going to get the best experience possible. I don't think Bentaleb's of that same level. I might be surprised, but um, wouldn't surprise me if he does go. No, I agree, Rick. And, you know, there'd be if he does make it through, there'd be no one, you know, happier than me to, to say I was wrong and, and, and that he's, you know, he's, he's made the grade. I, I remember last season specifically when, when his agent, as you mentioned quite rightly there, came out and, and made the comment. And he actually, words along the line of there are other clubs who who are interested and he wants a new deal. And I, I agree completely. I remember that sort of sticking in my throat at the time and thinking, hang on a minute, you know, this club's brought you through, giving you the, the start in the team um, where other clubs maybe wouldn't. It's a great shout. I hadn't really even thought uh, about the point you make there. Has that maybe um, affected his role in the team this season? Has, Poch- has that maybe stuck in Pochettino's throat a little bit? Has has, uh, has it affected his his mental mindset? Who knows, you know? Um those are the winners out of all this, aren't they? You know, come out with Ali and uh, there's no better answer than having Ali and, and Dyer on the pitch to uh, to produce um, some competition in there. They've been fantastic, haven't they? And as I say, it maybe puts that performances that we saw last season into a little bit of perspective, taking nothing away from that side last season because there were games where they were fantastic. Um, the Arsenal game that you point out there. But um, certainly food for thought, which is what we're here for, of course. And um, Rick, what have you got for us? OK, so I have got from the list here, I've got E Spurs. So E underscore Spurs under, underscore USA, our partners. They've put Onoma. He's shown that he can play pretty well, although he was thrown into the fire in his last outing. And I've got at Zach R. Shooter, who says Onoma and maybe Bentaleb. Mason is future captain material purely through his passion. Other two have great feet. Yeah, again, I'd say Mason, for me, will always be a squad player. Um, if you want me to say a lead, I mean, Kane is what you call captain. Kane yeah. is a captain, even though he's Great. a centre-forward. It's been great points this week from the pundits, I don't say it often, but he, he's been likened to Alan Shearer. And if he could yeah. be anything like what Alan Shearer was for Newcastle for us and stay at us for, you know, the, the amount of time he did and hopefully be a one-club man, then God, God, we've got some more goals to come, haven't we? Uh, he, 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 oh, just <laughs> phenomenal and... I think just to quickly the goal on the weekend that was out of nowhere. He it, it yeah. literally it was one touch, and Ericsson deserves the credit for keeping the ball in. But to somehow majestic to be able to turn and finish in one like that, and it's funny you see Spurs if you ever watch if you ever go to White Hart Lane and you ever go in early and you see the players warming up, it is all about that one touch finish. Yeah. So it just shows that sometimes when you watch the warm up, <laughs> it is actually being implemented, which is good to see. <laughs> But no, it's, I mean, it's some great, great points once again. And Anoma coming up again, and he's for sure, you know, no matter what he's, you know, I think we'd all agree, he's for sure got a role in, in the side in one way or another. The point is, will he make the, the breakthrough to the first team? Um, the first team Premier League, Champions League squad, I think is what we're really asking. How many of these Spurs crop um, of young players that we're hearing about and are coming through, how many of them will establish themselves? Because I think, although we've heard a lot about the academy, uh, they've they've quite rightly been, been been praised a lot. The only one that we've had really come through that's that's been a huge success has been Kane. So you know, for all that praise that the academy has received, um, the the academy director has been you know wanted, isn't he? By other clubs have been after him. The only one at the moment that's made the grade on a on a regular basis, I think, is Kane. Uh, whether or not we'll see the the others do the same or similar, the jury's still out at the moment, isn't it? But um. But let's hope so, because there's so much potential there and it's exciting, isn't it? With with the manager that we've got, who believes in these youngsters, the, the sky is surely the limit. So so we will see. Um, Ian, what have you got up on the social media for us? Um, I've got two. Uh, one from Brad Gold at BGold89. Carter Vickers could be in with Gant, was in the Europa, Europa Cup squad a few times and seemingly destined for big things. I think we've mentioned his... Um, his potential uh, earlier on in the in the pod, so uh, there, there's one definitely for the future. Uh, and then the last one I've got is from underscore Pochaholic, which is at C X V L A I, um, and he said Marcus Edwards is the best prospect coming through, and maybe Shayon Harrison. The rest of them are nowhere near good enough. 
So um, that, that, that's quite an interesting perspective on, um, on on the people coming through. Yeah, there's there's likes of Pritchard we haven't even mentioned yet, have we? You know, Alex Pritchard and there's Tom Carroll. You would count, I guess, in in that crop. Is he um, good enough to to make the grade? There've been a lot. Of, we've spoken about Tom Carroll on, on this podcast many times, haven't we? Um, and he's another one, I think, in the similar category as Ryan Mason. He's had a few loans, got to start performing now, I think. And yep. give him credit when he when he's been in the side, he certainly hasn't done anything wrong, has he? He's, you know, he's no. he's um, he's done himself proud when he's been in there. The question is, is he ultimately going to be at that level that would would uh, help us in the Champions League or, or uh, you know, top four regular top four Premier League side? I, I uh, think the thing with you know players like that. I think we have to ask ourselves, you know, the difficult questions. Would you start these players? Mm. And 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 I guess, you know, I think you know they they're good to come on, you know, to maybe change a game. But would you but would you base would you put them in to your starting lineup to go and win the game from from the first minute? And and I'm I just I'm not sure. I'm I'm just not sure about whether they're they're at the quality we need them to be in. To compete on three, four levels. Well, I tell you what, you make a great point there, Ian. And let's um, finish up the extra time this week by asking each of our panelists exactly that. The East Bears talking point this week was how many of our own will make the grade, uh, make the first team, let's say next season or the coming season. So how many of those will break through into the uh, our Champions League first eleven, uh, Premier League first eleven? Because we know the cups are a different, different story. Um, so let's ask the team that one let's go first rick how many do you see uh, being regulars in the first team that we've we've talked about tonight uh, it's a difficult one to answer i'm gonna say possibly onoma once he's gone out next season at a premier league club and i'm saying maybe in a couple of seasons time we may not necessarily see him next year but maybe the year after and kyle walker peters there's been a lot of good stuff heard about him so again possibly another prospect but again you're looking now and thinking that he's going to be uh, a third choice centre, a third choice fullback now. So it's going to be interesting to see if these players can break through. So it may be a case where next season they'll go on loan, hopefully to a Premier League club or top end Championship, do well there, and then the following season be ready to come back to Spurs and challenge for a regular place in the first team. Yeah, I really hope they do because there's nothing better is there than you know Spurs lad coming through and as we've seen, um, Jace. How many of those that we've mentioned tonight can you see doing a cane and, and making the grade? I think the only one I would say, if I sat here and said who's going to make, say, 15 starts next season, I think the only one that, that may get that number will be Ryan Mason. Mm. Um, but, you know, we've, we've given extended contracts, haven't we, to Onomar and a Wink. So they clearly have a future. But as I say, I, I feel that they've probably got to go out on loan just to get the... I, I think it'll be a lot more benefit for them to play 20 games for, say, Bournemouth next year or or for Crystal Palace or whatever in the Premier League, rather than sitting around at Tottenham and coming on for the odd 10 minutes when we're we're at, at home to Norwich and we're 2-0 up or something like that. Yeah. So I, I think Mason Mason and possibly Ben Taleb, I think like Ricky, I actually feel that Ben Taleb will leave in the summer. If he doesn't leave, I would imagine that's because we haven't signed the, the extra midfield player that we really want and we've decided that it's it's better to keep him around. But... But other than that, I don't see any of the others really making a first-team impression next year. Although, you know, looking further down the line, there's, there's definitely roles for some of them to play. The likes of Glover in goal, we haven't even mentioned. There's certainly loads of loads of talent in there. A lot to be a lot to be optimistic about. Ian, for you, um, to finish up tonight, how many can you see breaking through in the next, let's say, two seasons? I, I think Winks has got a chance. Uh, I, I, he came on in in one of the games at White Lane, um, I think it was a cup match, and I thought, you know, I think he was done the last 10 to 15 minutes, and I thought he looked quite lively. I think we, I think he's got a chance. Um, I'm, as 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 Rick said, I'm hearing good things about this Carl Walker Peters and um, and Carter Vickers as well, you know. So I think the next couple of years, I think we might see three or four of them, if if I'm being honest. Um, and I agree with Jason about Mason. And three or four, and that would be a success, wouldn't it? I, I think it would be. I think that um, you don't invest, you know, in you know millions in 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 the academy and the training facilities, you know, not to 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 make sure that you don't have to go out and spend, 
you know, 60 million quid on those four players, mm. you know, in, in the transfer market. So, yeah, I think that would be a success. And, and, and hopefully, you know, there's, there's some more to come that, um, that, 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 we, that we haven't yet seen in the first team, you know, and um, that, that are in the academies and, you know, the under-21s, the under-19s and so on and so forth that, that perhaps, you know, like the, the, the Edwardses and the, the Harrisons um, and the chat we got from Ebbsfleet. So, uh, you know, I, I think that there are, that there, there are hopefully those in, in the, 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 lower tier, the lower levels of, of, of our club that, that will come through because that's where you make your money. You don't invest in all, in all these facilities and those players not for them to make a start. Yeah, absolutely. The future's bright. The future's lily white, as the, they say. So uh... the pro- the problem you kind of get with them, isn't it, is that if you set your sights and say, okay, we do, we do want to be competitive in the Champions League, and we do want to compete for the titles, and you you strengthen the squad a little bit, it's that then those youngsters have got to be at the level that they were, say, to come into the side two years ago. They've yeah. got to be even better than that in two, you know. To next season, haven't they? Well, Jace, that's, this that's is the, the problem. problem. That Mason, have had, Mason could it? break into the side last year, but would Mason break into the side next year if, if he hadn't if he hadn't had his debut? Mm. That's the problem. The further up and the the better you become, the even more difficulty then for those youngsters to break their way into the side. Yeah, absolutely, and that's that's exactly the problem that I think Chelsea have encountered, isn't it, Jace? Yeah, I think definitely. I mean, there's a number of good guys. You look at Bamford, he looks a, a good player, didn't he? Um, did really well at Middlesbrough on loan and he, he comes this year and you, they loan him out to Palace, but he didn't quite make it there. He goes back to Chelsea and Chelsea side will go and sign Pato because we can't just have a promising youngster yeah. coming to this other side. It's got to be somebody now that can deliver on the Champions League. So we've seen it at Manchester United, haven't we? Where the criticism has been. It's, it's no good players at that level being developing now into the first teams. Mm, I, I just wonder, I think Spurs fans are a different breed, as we know, to, to the Chelsea fans. I think the Spurs fans are a little bit more patient. Um, we've had to be, haven't we? And uh, in terms of the youngsters coming through, I think we quite, you know, we, we, we like those youngsters coming through into the side. Um, and it's a different story, isn't it, when you're talking Chelsea can throw millions at anything, any, any player... Um, whereas for us, it means, I think, a lot more um, when you get a player come through like Kane and he succeeds and we're willing to give a player a little bit more time, aren't we, you know, to, to make the grade. Um, and I think I, I just genuinely think that under Pochettino and Levy, we're, we're not going to see um, the, the, the massive um, signings as much. I think they're going to heavily pursue this young, young player policy, whether or not it be... Um, uh, our own, you know, for want of a better phrase, or um, bought into the club, who knows? But I think we're certainly going to see a lot more younger players, a lot more um, of a of a younger average age in our side than we are mature players coming into the squad, um, experienced big signings coming in. I think they're going to be a lot lot younger. Um, the, the likes of De- Deli Alley's coming in. Um, I think we're going to see a lot more of that. But look, if they're any anywhere as not as good as Delhi Ali, I think we'd all be very, um, very happy. So long may it continue, as we always say. Um, guys, that is it for extra time this week. Don't forget to keep on sending your um, points into the Spurs podcast and our extra time show each and every week. Get in touch on the Twitter at E underscore Spurs and the Facebook. Give us a like on there. It's E Spurs page or one word. And get your view into the Spurs podcast and extra time each and every week. And as always for next week, we are set a topic for debate, which you guys can get in touch with, as you always do on the social media, on Twitter and on Facebook. And Jace, you've got a great question for next week. Yep. With the expected return to Jan Vertonghen from injury, do we stick with Wimmer or do we bring Jan Vertonghen back? Great, great question. And, and guys, get in touch with us. Let us know what you think. I'm sure there'll be the Vertonghen fans out there that think he should come straight back in. There'll also be those of you out there who think quite rightly that uh, Vim has done absolutely nothing wrong in the side and um, been, been great, isn't it, to have that, that asset to come straight in when Vertonghen's not there and perform as he has done. So really good one to get your thinking caps on for next week. Would you have Vertonghen come straight back into the side next week once he's fit? Or would you stick with Vimmer 
in the current Spurs side. Get in touch with us. Let us know what you think, guys, for next week's Extra Time podcast, which will, of course, be back next Thursday. The regular East Spurs podcast will be back next Monday. And, of course, we'll be talking, amongst other things, about the big game against Manchester United this coming weekend. That's all for Extra Time this week. My thanks, as always, to Jason, to Ricky and to Ian. Have a great week, guys. And, as always, come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs.